it seems like there was a lot of interest from Robert Sala and the Jets. Tell us what happened, what transpired, why not the Jets, and why did you come back to the 49ers? Uh, you know, you know, all the deals were pretty similar at the time, so I just chose the Niners. You know, I'm, you know, it's I couldn't I couldn't deny playing with some of my teammates. Like you know, what I mean, on our secondary, you know, we got Jimmy, Kwaski, you got uh Jason, all those guys. Man, it's just just being able to play one more year with those guys was just too intriguing to me. Hey Juan, you went you went to Kansas City, correct? And and I'm mm -hmm. curious while you were there, did you see the Lombardi Trophy that wow. they uh, swiped from you guys? Uh, we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> we're not gonna talk too much about that. But uh, nah, you know, it was a overall, it was a cool visit and everything. You know, um, besides that, uh, I don't want to bring up the Lombardi anymore. It was it was cool though. Hey Juan, how, how much of uh, the shark nickname originates from your from your passion for free diving? And do you have any um, like what's your best free diving story? You you ever like get were any like close encounters or anything like that? Uh, not too much. I uh, pretty much I never seen nothing bit like no big shark. Maybe just a nurse shark, but uh, nah, it had no correlation. It was just something that Kyle said in the meeting. And the guys just took it and ran with it the whole time. And, I mean, I kind of just, at the, at the end of the day, I embraced it. You know what I mean? Hey, k what was the free agency timeline like for you? Um, you know, just watching other players get signed and taking your conversations with other teams. Can you kind of walk us through um, what it's been like for you over the last few weeks and months? Uh, it's been it's been pretty busy a little bit. You know, just getting interest, in from, interest from a lot of different teams. You know, the Jets. Um, Kansas City, and just overall, it was just a good experience just being able to get out there, see the market or whatever. But I, at the end, I just chose to come back and play with the Niners. Hey, K1, uh, how much did Jaquaski Targ and I think Jason Verrett, I think I saw a little bit on Instagram, mm -hmm. try to recruit you or try to convince you to, to resign with the 49ers? Uh, those guys were everything, man. It was vital to the process. You know, they always wanted to asked me to keep him posted on what's going on with the visits and how free agency going. And ultimately, they wanted me to make the decision that was best for me. But they deep down inside, they wanted me to come back to the Niners and just do it one more year with them. So I was excited to be able to come back and just, uh, just to go for the journey for this year and try to win it. Hey, Juan, you mentioned a lot of the guys on the defense coming back, but they also had some big re-signings on the offense. Did that influence you as well, bringing Trent Williams back and Kyle Juszczyk? Yeah, definitely. Um, just seeing what Kyle and John has been able to build over these past couple months, I guess, with free agency is just it's phenomenal. And uh, just having those guys around and knowing them, having a good relationship with those guys and knowing what they're going to bring to the table on offense and uh, what we have on defense already in terms of young talent, a lot of veterans. You know, we got Nick coming back, the D-line. We re-signed DJ Jones. Um, we signed Samson from uh, from the Rams. And just just everything was just like it's coming together. And just to be able to be a part of the defense and communicate with the guys that I've been playing with the last four years, it should be amazing. K1, what are you what are you expecting the market to be like next year? Do you think it's going to correct itself a lot because of the cap's going to change? And and are you looking to capitalize on that? Uh, I hope so. You know, I'm hopefully just play a healthy full season, um, and just and see where see where it lies. You know, hopefully, hopefully it's with the Niners. But hey, you know, I'm just gonna play play my game, try to play well, lead our uh, secondary, and and see how far we can go, take this thing. Hey, K1, uh, have you talked to Corey Unlin yet, and, and what do you know about him? No, nah, I haven't. Uh, I don't know too much, but I'm pretty sure uh, I'll do my research and see what's going on, see how he is. Hey, K1, Jaquaski joked about being able to blitz 20 times a game under D'Amico Ryans. Are you expecting, like, an uber-aggressive mindset from him, and how do you think your role will change? Uh, I'm not sure, and I'm open to anything, you know. Kwaski won't blitz. He can blitz. You know, I'm I'm I play ball, man. I have fun. It doesn't matter if I'm in coverage or if I'm blitzing. Uh, just being on the field, I just want to be able to make an impact. And um, whatever D'Amico asking me, I'm ready. What can you say?
say about the way that you've grown as a player during your time with the 49ers? What skills have you improved and what are you still kind of looking to, what ways are you still looking to grow? Uh, it's always room for improvement. Um, over these past few years, I've just been able to just refine my game in terms of just playing the nickel, try to play it at the highest level, um, just tackling, being able to get the ball back for our offense, um, and just growing, like being able to lead, talk, you know what I mean, give guys words of encouragement, our young guys, um, just developing you know, as a player. I still got a lot more room to develop as a leader on the team, and that's what I'm looking forward to doing. You just mentioned D'Amico Ryans. You have a relationship with him from before. What about him makes him such a great defensive coordinator candidate? And what has he shared with you so far about what this season's going to look like? Uh, we we talk briefly, but just D'Amico, his whole demeanor as as a coach is uh, is high energy. You know, he expects a lot of his players, and he's demanding. He got a lot of knowledge for the game. Being a former player, he understands what it takes, and I understand what it takes to uh, to win. And I mean, it should be a it should be a good step moving forward having D'Amico uh, being able to call the plays and uh, leading this defense. You guys, good. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Thanks, K1. All right. Hey, Faithful, don't forget to click here to subscribe to our YouTube.